Welcome to the Inside Silverstone podcast, a business-focused podcast covering all things tech, engineering and innovation. Hosted by me, Chris Broom, a huge tech, motorsport and gaming fan, and also the owner of Longhurst, a firm of lifestyle financial planners and independent financial advisors located in Silverstone, Northamptonshire. This is a series of unscripted and unpolished conversations with leading business owners, thought leaders and high-tech talent where we discuss their experiences within the Silverstone business and motorsport region. We will also be asking them to share their knowledge, insight and their thoughts on the future just for you. If you're looking to learn more about the Silverstone high growth region and commercially connect with like-minded peers, you've definitely come to the right place. Welcome to Inside Silverstone. Welcome to the next edition of Inside Silverstone. My name is Chris Broom and I am your host. Today I am delighted to welcome onto the show a new friend, Sharwei He, who is Director of China and Emerging Economy Centre at the University of Northampton. Sharwei, welcome to the show. Good afternoon. How are you, Chris? Yeah, really, really good. Thank you for asking. Do you know what, Sharwei? I think you may have been the first guest in over 80 interviews who's asked me how I am. So thank you very much. <laughs> that's not a good sign of everyone else that's been on. But anyway, Charlene, we were introduced literally a week or so ago from uh, also a new friend of our show, Adrian Price, who is a fellow associate professor at the University of Northampton. And so Adrian's show was aired, I think, a week or two ago, um, where we obviously got to talk about um, business, international business, um, and also sort of touching very briefly on China, for example, at which point he said, I need to get you on the show so we can do a China special talking about massive opportunity, massive growth uh, possibilities, and, and basically how the businesses within the region that you and I are part of, which is Northamptonshire, Warwickshire, for example, could be and should be connecting with our international partners overseas, China, for example. So, we can freestyle this. So let, let's talk about China and the opportunities. So, you know, what are the opportunities? Why are you so passionate about it? What should we be doing? Right. Uh, where should we start? Uh, opportunities. Um, <laughs> number one, China is a huge market. If not the, perhaps the biggest market, it's one of the biggest markets for almost everything. Um, particularly for products that are uh, manufactured and produced and serviced in, in, in Western countries that, uh, such as the UK. Yeah. Um, so we can, we can list many um, products, luxury products, uh, uh, luxury cars, you know, and, um, airplanes, so on and so forth. So that's number one. Number two, China is becoming a, a increasingly important hotspot for innovation. So for countries such as the UK attached a huge importance to innovation, China is a potential partner that uh, perhaps I wouldn't advise any Ch uh, UK governments or businesses to, to avoid. Uh, number three, uh, talking about innovation, I see China and the UK natural innovation partners. So the UK is very good at scientific discovery, while the China um, is on the road of catching up in terms of science, but it's very good at uh, you know, using scientific, scientific uh, technology, uh, knowledge to come up with uh, producing products for the real world. And that's something that perhaps the UK um, is lagging behind. And again, I see that, uh, that both countries are natural innovation partners. So a huge opportunities are, as, as, as far as I'm concerned, in almost every, each of every industry sectors that, uh, that you, can, you can name off. Okay, and so, which is great and, and, and clearly very positive to hear. What's your role? So, you know, you're obviously at the University of Northampton, Associate Professor in International Business and obviously leading their sort of China department. But, you know, why are you doing this and, and, and how are you helping to facilitate, you know, constructive conversation and even connectivity? 
Okay, to start with, so um, I'm an associate prof professor in international business. So I do, I personally do um, an, an research about Chinese investment into the UK. And in, in particular, I actually, I look at uh, the impact of the Chinese acquisitions in the UK, how that impacts on the British businesses that were acquired by the Chinese. So, um, the impact that I looked upon uh, went beyond job creation, financial investment, but I wanted to look at in particular in terms of the innovative, innovative capabilities and competitiveness, what has been, what, what ha you know, what has happened once the British firms were acquired by, by the Chinese firms. Okay. So, so, so that's, uh, that's, that is my role as a researcher. It is to understand, if you like, uh, the impact of the rise of China and and the Chinese firms and their internationalization. Do you have any? Just to butt in there, do you have any? Forgive me. Do you have any examples of that that you can that you can share? I.e., something that you've sort of researched and and. Some... Oh yeah. Uh, so, so so I published a, a, a journal paper at uh, at a very uh, at at a top ranking uh, business journal called Journal uh, of World business, and it is based on a case study of a Chinese firm taking over a British semiconductor producer called Dynax in Lincoln. Now, the research that I have been that I have been doing demonstrated that uh, yes, on one hand, the Chinese are coming to acquire the British firms to learn to learn the new technologies in particularly in semiconductor uh, component making. But also, at the same time, they brought in technologies, uh, technology understandings, so that the British firm, who previously didn't know how to produce their semiconductor components for the railway market, for example, and now they have the knowledge from the parent firm, so that they can understand, you know, how they could design and manufacture uh, manufacture semiconductor components for the railway market, not just for the Chinese railway market, but, but for the global railway market now. And together now, the two, the parent and the subsidiary firms, they are to get to, they are working now together to and making inroads into uh, electric vehicle sector now, and that's also very new to. The British firm who you know before the acquisition happened so not just that the Chinese come in for for to, to learn uh, technology and know-how but they also introduce new knowledge into the British firms so that they can further upgrade their capability and innovation if you like that's 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 what I talked about earlier Fantastic. Uh, and what else are you doing to, to support sort of UK businesses and their sort of counterparts in China? So, uh, so I see my role as uh, really as a cultural ambassador between the two countries, between the UK and, and China. So as I mentioned earlier, that I saw huge potential between the two countries. So I lead uh, China and the Emerging Economy Center at the university. And really what we aim to do is to link together um, British institutions, firms, uh, with their Chinese counterparts. So, so to, to materialize many of the collaboration opportunities that I could only foresee. So an example is, is, uh, is the work that I have been doing with Lincolnshire County Council. So I brought in, that, that, was, that was in 2015, uh, I brought in a very senior delegation from Hunan province in China, so a province with 70 million pop um, population and, uh, and with fast development pace, of course. Very good, very solid base in uh, advanced manufacturing. So I brought in a senior delegation to, to, to Lincoln and immediately that's uh, followed up by a reciprocal visit from Lincolnshire County Council to Hunan province and later on in in 2018 both sides decided that they we, we should they should form a formal sister regional relationship and they signed they signed a formal agreement 
Now, the story after that is that uh, um, then subsequently a direct flight was opened between London and the capital city of Hunan province, uh, which um, many passengers, including myself and my family, benefited uh, because Hunan is my, is my home, t home province. Ah, great. Uh, uh, and also that contributed to a huge increase in terms of trade volume between Hunan and Lincolnshire and the wider UK. So to give you an example, the trade volume between Hunan province and, and uh, the UK reached 1.4 billion US dollars. And that was a 112% increase from, it, from the previous year. So that's really, again, you know, the potential is huge, but, but uh, you know, once but, you know, there are so many uh, potentials and, and opportunities for businesses, you know, for universities, for local authorities to, to make it happen. And so, um, my business, Longhurst, is part of the Silverstone Technology Cluster, uh, yeah. which is uh, located at the heart of British motorsport. So that's uh, Silverstone and Silverstone Park. Are there equivalents of our technology cluster over in China? And if they, if they, if there are, presumably part of the, the objective here is to get them all talking and forming these similar relationships. A very good point. Um, my China Centre, China and the Emerging Economy Centre, is also a, a fellow member of STC. Um, now, again, this is something that I get very excited, but at the same time, perhaps also slightly disappointed. So, talking about um, uh, technology clusters in, in, in China, the remain and one of the uh, fast moving ones is actually, a, uh, you know, is, is something that I actually, that I found in my home province, the capital city of Changsha. Now many of the businesses in STC, that are very, very interested in autonomous vehicle development, isn't it? Now Changsha uh, emerged interestingly from nowhere and to be a front runner of, um, of development in terms of uh, autonomous vehicle uh, development. So the city managed to build uh, a test site, of China's most advanced test site for autonomous vehicle and wireless driving technologies in yeah. China. Yeah. Uh, that was completed in 2018. In 2019, so given them another year, so that site, by the way, was completed within a year. So given them another year, so by summer, by the summer of uh, 2019, the last time that I visited the city, yep. they have already worked with more than 300 big players in autonomous vehicle driving, uh, is there any autonomous vehicle development players that I can think of in China are already their commercial partners. They're already doing, you know, tests, all sorts of tests of all sorts of vehicles and drones, by the way, yeah. on the site. Now, that is a huge opportunity for my fellow businesses uh, in STC. Uh, so I've been trying to to, to broadcast this opportunity, but, but uh, so far, I don't think that uh, any uh, UK perhaps diplomats and uh, businesses have visited uh, that test site. That's okay. an interesting development. Well, well, so we, well, we need to be shouting a little bit more about that and, and certainly having a conversation with Pim, who's the CEO of the cluster, and Roz, who's obviously commercial director of uh, MEPC and, uh, and Silverstone Park. Um, yeah, that's an unusual one. I can't believe that, that's, uh, that, that those conversations aren't happening. It's, it's perhaps, you know, on one hand, that's perhaps partially, partly that is due to the fact that, you know, things in China are developing too fast. It's just, the, you know, beyond the imaginations of, of really, you know, many of, the, of, of, of our UK fellow citizens. Uh, you know, so, so that's natural. So there are new opportunities emerging on, on a daily basis. But so this is a huge one that I hope that uh, some, of, uh, some of our fellow STC members could, uh, you know, could grapple with. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, well, clearly this podcast is, is part of that communication chain, right? So we'll make sure it gets aired and re-aired yeah. and re-shared. Um, 
By the way, we do we do introduce we do help to introduce uh, Chinese businesses into the STC uh, into STC. By the way, so, so last year, along with uh, with, with PIM, that we introduced uh, the delegation from Nanjing, um, so another very interesting city. Uh, huge yeah, city. I, remember, I remember that happening. Has that has that progressed any further? Well, I I, I hope so. That's our uh, but uh, I'm waiting for. Uh, I'm waiting for a follow-up course for you know for STC um, members. Fine, understood, understood. Shall I thank you? I mean, that's you know a lot of information, and clearly passionate about what you're doing. And you are right; there needs to be more communication, certainly amongst uh, you know my fellow cluster members about what's going on in China, and uh, and uh, certainly be talking to you about you know connecting and, and creating yeah. those relationships. Um, COVID's obviously been you know, rubbish and it, it horrendous sort of experience for all of us, right? So we're seven months in now to, to, you know, what was originally a full lockdown and then we've been let free and then, uh, and now it's sort of, you know, borderline going to be another sort of semi lockdown to full lockdown, no doubt. H how have you personally been and how's the, 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 the university been coping with, uh, with this and having to change how you deliver lectures and support? students who themselves are clearly going through it themselves mm. now obviously this is a huge challenge for for the for the university uh, for the university sector um, but, but luckily i think that our university the university of northampton and uh, that we are we were uh, you know we are lucky enough because that we already uh, already pioneered and experimented if you like you know the delivery of lectures and seminars, you know, learning activities online before this happened. Yeah. So we already, we have, uh, you know, we, we are already familiar with, you know, some of the technologies in, uh, you know, platforms in terms of how to, how to do online teaching and, and learning. So in that sense that we perhaps, uh, we wish, we perhaps we are in a better position than perhaps many other universities. Yes. Um, so that's uh, that's uh, you know perhaps a comfort message, but so of course still this is a huge challenge. Uh, you know, with students in almost everywhere in the world, you know, at different time zones. So even though that uh, you know we have already familiar, we are already familiar with the technologies and the platforms. Still a huge challenge for for the universities and the, the tutors and the students themselves. And how have you been personally? How have you found COVID? And how, how have you been keeping yourself active and, and mentally ma mentally active? Just the mothering through. Um, but but I, I, I make sure that, uh, you know, I, I do talk often to, to my little kids so that uh, they are okay. They, they, you know, they could manage. Yeah, understood. Um, Post-COVID. So one of the final questions we've been asking on this COVID catch-up series is sort of post-COVID, let's pretend it's 2021 and hopefully we've all had our vaccinations or otherwise. What are you personally looking forward to doing the most that perhaps at the moment you can't do? Well, uh, perhaps uh, as, as my, my case that said to me very often, uh, that uh, when can we go back to China again? And so to resume international travel. So yes. many of our uh, projects are, are put on hold at the moment because of the restrictions of, of, of international travel. Wow. So I'm hoping that uh, we are able to go back to to the old normal. <laughs> um, hopefully, well, shortly. Right. Fingers you've crossed. Still, presumably, you've still got family in China. Uh, yes, I, I do have uh, my my mom, my mom, my mother, and my sisters. Okay, and how have they been coping with obviously? you know the, the equivalent restrictions over there and they actually domestically uh, in china that uh, the restrictions have been relaxed and uh, i i don't think that uh, you, you have big troubles now traveling inside china so the the challenge is is you know is is the cross-border uh, travel so yeah. once you're in china i don't think that uh, you would have much di uh, many difficulties yeah, understood, understood. Charway, I'm going to conclude with a final question. To this question, I've spent decades of my life traveling the world, speaking to gurus, learning from the best so that I can, like Parkinson does, or we used to do on TV, 
I can ask people the challenging questions that get to the nub of what's really important, especially between UK and China relations. Charwe, what is the king of crisps? <laughs> I can only um, well, let me confess that I, I've only lived in the UK for 18 years. That's so, long enough to have eaten some crisps. <laughs> so what I'm going to confess is that I'm not a big fan of crisps. The, 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 the crisps that I like is, is actually is, is, uh, the one, the, the vegetable uh, crisps, uh, so, so with sweet potatoes and some vegetables inside. So Very good. Potato That's, we, we've had potato a number crisps. of people say a similar thing. So if, if it's not crisps, what's your sort of, if you're going to sit down with the kids and watch a movie, so you're going to stick Disney on or whatever it's going to be, what, what's your sort of snack of choice? <laughs> and there's always popcorn for me. <laughs> Salted or butter? Um, or sugar? Uh, sugar for me. Uh, sweet, sweet. Not, not very healthy style, but, but I can afford it. Yeah, why not? We're allowed treats, right? Especially during COVID. It's, uh, it's, it's a way of cheering each other up, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Charway He, thank you so much for coming on the show. For so pleased talking to you. Yeah, for everybody watching this and listening to it, we're going to make sure we leave a number of links in the show notes so that you can obviously contact Charway, obviously connect with the university that is part of, um, and, and certainly from a, um, a, a sort of commerciality perspective and talking about relations between China, the UK, but also this international business full stop. Charway clearly is a man to talk to, as is his colleague Adrian Price who I said is, uh, was interviewed on the show a couple of episodes ago. So, Shai, thank you so much for being a good sport and coming on at short notice. Um, and obviously look forward to eventually at some point meeting you in real life uh, alongside Adrian and everyone else we've been interviewing. Um, and uh, I will be speaking to Pim literally in uh, a few hours' time for a quiz that we do, um, which, by the way, you're invited to if you'd like to join and I will give him a little kick to see what's going on with the whole China conversation, because quite clearly it needs to be a bit louder. Fantastic. Thank you so much for, for, for having me. So a pleasure meeting you. Great pleasure to talk to you. The Inside Silverstone podcast is produced by the team at Longhurst for the benefit of those with a passion for all things tech, engineering and innovation. For more information, please visit longhurst.co.uk forward slash Inside Silverstone, whilst also remembering to give us a 5 out of 5 star rating on iTunes. Please note that neither Chris Broom or Longhurst work for Silverstone Park, Silverstone Circuit or Silverstone Technology Cluster.